welcome to Garage Idiots. I'm Preston. I'm the idiot. We're about to do some stupid stuff. My other idiot is not here right now, so I'm going to tackle this on my own. We are going to redo the hood, basically everything I did before to widen it 10 inches. We are going to cut all of it out and redo it the right way. Not the right way, but we're going to make it better. And then on the MR2 chassis, we are going to redo some stuff on the firewall uh, and basically try to get it ready for the roll cage and its engine swap. So we are putting a K-Series in this. We have uh, K-Series swap mounts from Hux Racing. Um, their link is in the description if you guys want to see any of that. So we're going to just try and get the rest of the chassis ready. Uh, there's not a lot left. It still looks like a train wreck, but everything is slowly coming together. So we have a lot to do. I'm going to get started and we'll see where we end up. Also, stay tuned to the end of the video. I have a surprise for you guys or good news or something, but it's at the end of the video. As you can already see, this is gonna look way better. Um, this metal is, I don't know, it was really easy to cut. I did a pretty decent job of cutting a straight line. Well, it's not lined up, so it looks crooked, but it's pretty friggin' straight. Check it out, dudes and dudettes. Um, okay, so from afar, overall, I'm happy with it. Um, right here, this part of the hood uh, kind of sinks in a little bit, probably just from cutting and working it so much. So I didn't weld any of that because I'm gonna take the hood off and hammer that up a little bit. Um, and then the majority of the black hood or the black section of the hood um, is all drooping in a little bit. So. My theory, my idea, what I did, what I'm going to do, is I just met, so, and it might be hard to see, but most of this is gonna be out of V, and most from this, stooping down. My plan was to just meet the metal up even, and then once I get it all tacked and all welded, then I'll just get underneath the hammer and try and lift this side. But if the metals are at the same point, they should both come up at the same, that's my theory. If that doesn't get it perfect, which I know it will not, um, that Q Bondo and that's where that's going to come in. Um, up here, I have to get underneath it and lift that up. Um, this piece is weird as well. So I just did exactly what I just told you. I met the metal. And then once I get that all finished up, I'll hammer it up from the bottom and lift it all up the way I need it to be. Um, but that is 100 times better than what was there. Uh, should be a lot stronger having it all one piece. Um, also going to flip it over. Uh, once it's all hammered and all done as best I could without Bondo, I'm gonna flip it over and then uh, probably weld some strips along that whole seam on both sides just to make it stronger. And then I might do a strip of thin metal, probably two strips of thin metal going that way just to make it a little more rigid because it's definitely less rigid than it was. But so that's done, that's good. Um, on to the next.
that freaking welding helmet line. <laughs> okay, if you guys made it this far in the video, um, you guys get first dibs basically. Um, so our first run of t-shirts, we're calling it our promo t-shirts. Um, basically they're Fruit of the Loom soft spun. We have 20 of them and they're up for sale. So they're marked down a little bit. So normal shirts are gonna be 25 bucks. These are up for 17. We are putting 100% of the revenue from these shirts into buying more shirts. I found a Gildan soft spun shirt that's a little bit lighter. These shirts are really nice. They're Fruit of the Loom. I have two, Mina has two, my friend has a couple. They're nice, they're just a little thicker and I did order multiple different kinds of shirts and turns out the Gildan is, to my surprise, softer and more comfortable than the Fruit of the Loom. So we have 20 total. I think there's uh, there are no smalls. So there's medium, large, extra large, and 2XL. That's all we have of those. They're a little bit cheaper. So buy them while you can. They're up on the website. The website is thegarageidiots.com because garageidiots.com was taken. So uh, go check those out. They are up. And then as soon as or as those sell, I'm going to start ordering more of the normal ones. And then we should um, very soon we'll have a steady stock of t-shirts. So there's that. Go check it out and I'll show you what I've done. So this you really didn't get a good look of in the last video because I hit it with the hood. Um, but so this is kind of all tied in and then I was gonna mock up. So I'm gonna take that white hoop, cut it right down the center. And then like I've said a hundred times, I'm gonna stick one in right here, run it along this, and then it's gonna tie into the A pillar. I was gonna mock that up, but I'm out of time. I did a good amount of work and I have to go and I wanna show you guys some stuff. So that's that. Um, the hood, the hood you saw, ta-da, firewall. Uh, so basically I just cut the top of that off because it was ugly and put this bar on there. So this was another old hoop and I ended up having to like pry it to get the angle a little better. This side is pretty dang good. That side is a little bit off, but this is, you're not gonna see this. Also, I wanted to point out, um, like right here where those little uh, nubs were that I cut off, do not do that for roll cages. This is more for looks than structure. Um, however, it is strong, but I would not do anything like that for roll bars. This is meant for structure, basically of this tin foil, not for my life, so yes. Um, so did those little brackets or little, I don't know what you call that, but I reinforced that a little bit because that was the sway bar. Um, so I'm going to clean that up, but I think that looks nicer, uh, coming around that instead of that awkward little L. Um, so once that is all painted one color, I think it's going to be a night and day difference. This, uh, don't look too bad. Gotta, gotta hammer it in and kind of still seam seal it and such. Then I'm going to grind down the old welds, but, uh. Doesn't look too bad. I mean, I, I think it looks better than before. And then we'll, I'm probably gonna get rid of, uh, maybe not, I don't know. I gotta clean that up, fill some gaps. Um, but I think that's better than it was before. So, yay. Yay. What I've decided to do, I might've mentioned this, don't know if I did. I'm going to take the entire wire harness from a Honda and basically strip all the MR2 wiring because the only thing MR2 electric wise that I need is gonna be ABS, which I may or may not try to hook up um and then blinkers headlights and just kind of really lame normal stuff that we can wire up to switches very easily so this way i don't have to buy the expensive um i mean every every wire harness merger is expensive so i don't have to buy that um it'll simplify all the wiring in the car because i can throw everything here basically away and then on the honda harness we can uh cut off the snid bits for like climate control and stuff we know we don't need so um, I think, I think I have enough money to go to the junkyard and pull a case series. So like I said in the last video, we're going to look for, uh, like oil, next oil change, mileage indicators, try and find one that was hit in the rear or on the side. So we know it was running in theory. Um, and then throw that in here. And I decided what we were going to do on the last bug, we kind of got the motor in, we got it to start, and then we did our turbo setup and we saw how that turned out. So on this... We're gonna put the motor in, we're gonna get it running and driving, and then I'm gonna drive it. And we are gonna get all the bugs and all the little kinks and all the weird little stuff worked out. And then over the winter, or sooner, I don't really know, but um, after we get it running and driving really good and I'm confident that I could drive it to and from Colorado to Kansas, God forbid that ever happens, but I'd be confident enough to do it. 
uh, once that is done, then we're gonna turbo it and we're gonna do a good, depending on your definition of good, we're gonna do a better turbo setup than we did on the bug. We're gonna do a single turbo. We're gonna try and make some decent, efficient power. Uh, the Jeep right now, if you guys have not seen that, go watch the last video of that. Um, that will be just pure obnoxiousness, but it might actually work. On the bug, I'd like to make a healthy, efficient, like reliable horsepower. So it should be a pretty fun setup. We're gonna try and go for as much, as much function as we can. I think we have the wow factor pretty much nailed on this thing. So we don't need to make the engine and the turbo setup all crazy. So that's what we're doing on that. That's what I did. Uh, I think, so the next step is the motor. And I think, I think we are ready for the roll cage. There's probably like five or six hours off camera that I need to just weld some stuff up. Um, played a couple corners and then we're ready. So sorry this video took a minute. Um, hopefully that was worth your while. Like I said, if you have not seen the Jeep stuff, go watch that. It's getting weird. You guys might like it. And uh, there will be another video probably up tomorrow. Uh, it should be pretty short, but it's going to lead to something you guys might be interested in. So check it out. Check out the t-shirts, thegarageidiots.com. Rink. <laughs> the rink. The link is in the description. Thank you guys for watching. And until next time, we will see you later. Bye-bye.